When it comes to UK race circuits, it's not often that they come with a sea view. Well, today we've certainly got a stunning backdrop. And if the rest of this season is anything to go by, the racing's going to be even better. Welcome to Anglesey Circuit for the seventh round of the GT Cup Championship. GT Cup Championship last raced here at Anglesey back in 2008, so track knowledge and any recent race experience could be a big advantage this weekend. Let's head down to the rather windswept paddock to find out which of the drivers have been doing their homework and who's feeling confident. And I believe you've not actually raced at Anglesey before, have you? No, first time at Anglesey. Um, I love it. I think it's a great circuit and uh, I think Richard Peacock's done a great job with it. It looks really, really, really nice and it flows beautifully too. So, uh, yeah, I'm really looking forward to having a good race around here and see what we can do. Uh, the test day went really well. We were quick on the test day um, and then we get a lot of understeer here. It seems to be an understeery track and we've been trying to get rid of that since and we seem to have gone backwards with the setup now almost. I don't know, maybe the conditions or something, I don't know because qualifying wasn't very good. So we've got a bit of work to do in the race. We're at Anglesey, a lot of people haven't raced here before, but I understand you get a lot of time around this circuit. Yeah, no, no, I am probably one of the lucky ones to be able to come here quite a few times, especially at the start of the year to do our testing to try and get a few shakedown things done, so I'm happy how everything's gone so far, so I can't really complain. So is there a secret to this circuit? There is a couple, but I can't tell them just yet. Well, here we are down on the grid, ready for race one at a very windy Anglesey. And the front row of the grid, well, it's the turn of the youngsters. Danny Wynn Stanley in the luminous green TVR is starting in second place. And no surprise, on pole position, it's Jordan Witt. With all that inside knowledge of the circuit, we're expecting him to go well here. But before I blow away, I'm going to hand you over to Ben in a nice cosy commentary box. Thanks, Charlie. Nice and warm in here. It's not on the grid, the Prelly grid girls are standing up in the force of a gale but the electric action on track is going to be white hot the cars on the formation that rolling start as ever in the gt cup championship with jordan witt on pole position and danny wynn stanley alongside him tom andrew well up in third position the group two morgan and championship leader andrew Ren lines up in fourth with group three runners headed by bartley dougal in 10th position david witt well up the grid in 11th position and adam hayes and mark radcliffe always give us some close action in the bmws the pace cars in we're about to go racing and away we go as jordan witt and the yellow chevron leads the charge into turn one and then they accelerate on towards the Booker track banking with Danny Wynn Stanley in the green TVR trying to stay and shoot to Andrew in third ruin breaking very deep into the hairpin there and he runs wide and across the grass something may have broken because that is a very uncharacteristic error there for Andy Ruin so the rest of the field cleanly through Ruin to the back of the pack as Wynn Stanley sets off in hot pursuit of Jordan Witt accelerating through Church and then along the straight along by the seashore they climb up the hill at that point as there is Andy Ruin and he has hit something he's out of the race great pity there for Andy out of Peel comes the race leader with still Danny Wynn Stanley the big TVR in hot pursuit and the twists and turns here at the Anglesey circuit will really play into the hands of the Chevron as they accelerate down the Tom Price straight on towards the hairpin potential overtaking opportunity here but I don't think Danny Wynn Stanley is quite close enough lick of flame there as Jordan Witt changes down the gears and then when Stanley looks to get on power nice and early as these are some of the longest straights on the circuit this is where you can really close in on the Chevron the leading duo pulling well clear as look at the wind whipping at the teams on the pit wall and the low profile the Chevron GR8 probably uh, beneficial in this weather as it uh, won't be quite as uh, side swiped by the gale as some of the other cars out on tracks they file through to complete the first lap of the race and Jordan Witt just trying to build an advantage ahead of the field through Booker Track banking once more and he is just beginning to ease away here from Danny Wynn Stanley in second position Wynn Stanley with some more sponsor sticks on the car this weekend which is great to see Church a corner of the drivers absolutely loves it really feeds them out at high speed as they then run along the seashore there is the group three leader Bartley Dougal Bartley Dougal is having a good battle here with David Witt Jordan's dad and this is one of the strongest showings of the season here from David Witt and he is really hassling Bartley Dougal who will probably be finding there's no laughing matter from Witt because 
Bartley Dougal is thinking very firmly about the championship here and the group three points and the chevron all over his rear spoiler is really the last thing he wants at this stage particularly as he's not too far away from Adam Hayes and Mark Radcliffe there's the group two leader Tom Andrew fourth in the race overall chasing down Paul Hogarth with then David Tomlin in fifth in the Ferrari with Andy Ruin after the race this is a good opportunity for Tomlin to accumulate some championship points back to the Bartley Dougal and David with battle and as we were saying you can just see the orange BMW is beginning to close in as it's a real shame that's Daryl Wilson in the pits what a shame for Daryl Marcos unfortunately out of the race as Adam Hayes is definitely closing up here onto the Bartley Dougal and Jordan Witt battle this is the last thing that Bartley Dougal wants defending from David Witt and then bringing the other group three runners back into the mix as Tom Andrew continues to lead in the Morgan and this is a good performance here from Tom he's had a few mechanical issues this season so let's hope the car stays together until the chequered flag comes out because not only have the drivers got the challenge of the circuit they've got the challenge of the conditions as well today still David Witt piling the pressure onto Bartley Dougal as Bartley Dougal looks to just put a bit of daylight between himself and the Chevron and there is Adam Hayes who is closing on the pair of them as well and Witt is going to go for the move here he moves the inside of Bartley Dougal and David Witt goes through Rapier move as he then climbs the hill. Bartley Dougal continues to lead Group 3, of course. We've got another battle shaping up very nicely. It's the regular yellow Porsche of Francis Gallison, head of the fluorescent yellow example in the hands of the vastly experienced Colin Broster. Well, the pair of them had some great battles already this year in the GT Cup Championship. And this race proving to be no exception as Broster closes in on Gallison under braking into the hairpin. They will then accelerate out of the hairpin and then along to the final corner on the lap, the bus stop, which on this full international configuration. It's just a left hander as Win Stanley's in the pits. Danny Win Stanley pits him from second and Michael Simmons as well. Would you believe it? Well, even if there was no luck in the world at all, Michael Simmons would still have bad luck. He's had a very difficult season, but he still enjoys his racing. So that promotes Paul Hogarth into second. Colin Broster still chasing down Francis Gallison. And Gallison is really just beginning to come back here to Colin Broster. Could only be a matter of the time before these two are really engaged in battle so they accelerate up the hill Adam Hayes there second in group three but he has got Mark Radcliffe just beginning to close in on his tail and Mark Radcliffe there he is in the number 19 car with the black bonnet loves it when the weather turns nasty and so if the rain begins to come in we can expect to see Radcliffe moving up through the field down the Tom Price straight once more and look at Broster taking yards out of Francis Gallison under breaking into the hairpin so they accelerate out of the hairpin and then we'll head on towards the bus stop to complete another lap and Broster again looking to challenge Gallison as Jordan Witt continues to lead the race imperiously this has been an emphatic performance from Jordan Witt as still Gallison and Broster Gert it's super battle this one now what if anything could Colin Broster do he launches to the inside of Peel and Francis Gallison through he goes Colin Broster gains the place from Gallison so nicely judged move there from Colin Broster he will now set off in pursuit of David Tomlin in the Ferrari although I think Tomlin may just be too far down the road as Danny Wynn Stanley you can see in the background recovering from his pit stop so they climb up the hill and that prom for Hayes Adam Hayes is in trouble second place man in group three and he slows dramatically Tom Andrew continues to lead group two super drive from Tom just ahead of David Tomlin as here comes the Broster and Gallison battle now that Francis Gallison is able to follow him Colin Broster's wheel tracks he looks to fight back they draw side by side long Tom Price straight and it's Gallison who's got the track position here as they are about to break into the hairpin Broster to the outside Gallison to the inside and it is Francis Gallison who maintains the position now let's see if he runs wide on the exit no he doesn't so Colin Broster having briefly enjoyed being in fifth position now demoted once more into sixth and looking to fight back Paul Hogarth very welcome returning to the GT Cup Championship in second position and uh, emphatic second it is too as Broster's back ahead of Gallison what a battle this is as they head through turn one on towards the Booker Track banking as Broster well now he is through past Francis Gallison will he be able to pull away David Tomlin and Tom Andrew Tom Andrew in third Tomlin in fourth still not too far up the road ahead of them they've got a lot of daylight between themselves and the next man back David Witt so they are able to dispute this amongst themselves as into the closing stage of the race here is the race leader Jordan Witt this has been a superb drive from Jordan who really has arrived in the GT Cup Championship with a bang he's got future champion written all over him as he accelerates out of the corkscrew along the Tom Price straight and then down the hill into the hairpin for the final time so the diminutive Chevron GR8 which has been 
very well sorted in the father and son team of David and Jordan Witt, both of them having excellent drives in this first race of the weekend to Anglesey, but it is Jordan Witt who's going to come through and take the win from Paul Hogarth in second, Tom Andrew in third. And if anything, Andrew in these closing stages is just beginning to close in on Paul Hogarth with David Tomlin not too far back. But it's out of the final corner. The checker flag is ready waiting and it is the win for Jordan Witt. So Jordan Witt takes the win. And what about Hogarth? Yes, he did just hold off Tom Andrew on the line with David Tomlin in third. Colin Broster eventually claiming that fifth position and Bartley Dougal winning Group 3 in eighth from Mark Radcliffe with Don Grice riding out the top ten. So the Group 1 classification, Jordan Witt from Paul Hogarth and valuable points to David Tomlin. In Group 2, a well-deserved win for Tom Andrew from Colin Broster and Francis Gallishan with Bartley Dougal claiming Group 3 from Mark Radcliffe. Super start to the weekend for the GT Cup Championship runners in very difficult conditions and the drivers quite rightly celebrating up on the podium as the champagne starts to fly at Anglesey. Well, Jordan, you said you knew some secrets about this circuit. I didn't know you meant a shortcut. <laughs> no, no, it's just we had a lot of practice around here and the boys know the setup, ins and outs of it, what to do, what, what, what I want, what, what I need and it's just working again around here because we know it so well, just working three corners ahead at all the time, so you can never fail to just pull away. She made it to the end. Yeah, yeah, thank you very much. Uh, great result for the car and the team, and like you say, most important thing is the car actually lasts us to the end, and uh, the team's been really working hard on the, uh, on the car, so uh, I think we've thoroughly deserved this uh, result. Do we think that's the end of the uh, fuel problems now? Um, can never say never, but hopefully. I think we uh, hopefully touch what we've got it sorted. You feeling at home in these conditions? Yes, it's just like Scotland. It's, it's, it's quite nasty out there. The wind's quite bad on that, on that back straight. You can feel it blowing you about a bit. I hope, hopefully it doesn't get any stronger for this afternoon. Yes, hopefully not. Perhaps an improvement in conditions would be nice for race two. The forecast is for sun, so I think the wind's to stay, so we'll just need to see what happens. With the weather taking a turn for the worst during race one, Pirelli may have their work cut out, changing all those slicks over to wets during the lunch break. Join us after the break for race two.